Welcome back, everybody, to the second season of The Last Door. Now, if you're watching this part, it must mean a few of you enjoyed the first part, so thanks for your likes, your comments, and, uh, well, I hope that the support continues throughout the series. Here we go. We're currently in 26 Paul Street, London, which used to be the home of Mr. Alexander Dupre, and uh, Mr. Wakefield here doesn't know where Alexander Dupre is. I kind of do myself, but he doesn't, so we're looking for any signs and clues to his whereabouts. So let's just search his old home and see what we can find. What's this? The door is bricked up. Right, so we're on the other side of that door. Uh-huh, the windows must be just, you know, in the foreground here somewhere. I think this must be like a painting? It just fell off the wall, right? I cannot tell who is depicted in the portrait since it's so badly damaged. It seems someone crushed it into the floor. Right, so they really, really didn't like it that much. A fireplace? Y yes and there's something among the ashes. Brilliant, okay. What is it? What do we got? It's a piece of paper, okay. It looks like some kind of message, but there is only one half here. The paper has been carefully burnt. Vidi Leviticus? No. Um, it's going to be Latin. Latin... Uh, is it the Latin phrase that Devitt and his pals used to say? What was that? It wasn't Veni Vidi Vici or something, was it? No, I don't think so. It was something a bit more obscure than that. I don't think it was that, anyway. Okay. Interesting. That's only, uh, that's only one half of it, though. Let's see if we can find the other half. What is that? <laughs> that, like, one pixel there. A military medal. There is a relief of Her Majesty the Queen and several pieces of metal engraved with the names of battles unknown to me. Okay. Oh, we can, take, we can take that as well. Okay. Maybe it will mean something to one of Alexander's fellow patients in the hospital. That guy? The guy in the uniform who said he was a coward. Probably. Oh, I, d I don't think it's going to be the guy who's drawing outside or the woman. So, yeah. Alright, so that's the, that's the medal. Couple of little pictures up there, but I can't comment on those, apparently. What's this? Again, just a little pixel. A piece of paper on the table. Is it the other half to this? Let's see. It appears to be. Okay. Uh, the paper shows some seemingly random letters. It seems as if half of it is missing. Well, not anymore. There you go. This is strange. I have put both halves back together, but some letters seem to be missing from the right half. The message does not make any kind of sense. Well, to be honest, my <laughs> my Latin isn't very good, so I don't really know what this would be anyway. Uh, um... Let's, have a, let's just have a look at this again. This is the first one. This is, this is uh, in the ashes, wasn't it? It's burnt. Right. What if we... Can we burn the other half? This half? Hey, there you go. The heat from the candle has revealed a set of letters painted with invisible ink. So, um, we've burnt both halves. Can we put them together now properly? Brilliant. Still can't read it. Oh, he can, thankfully. It, apparently it reads, I've seen a dead eyelid move. Okay. <sighs> I've seen a dead eyelid move, right. Uh, that must be one of the windows that's bricked up. Uh, another portrait here. One man in high rank uniform. He's missing an arm. Okay. He's missing an arm. Alexander, I don't think, was missing an arm. Uh, a bookshelf here. Yep. Among the titles, uh, tri oh my god, these, these words. Trithemesis de Lapide Philosophico, Giber's De Invention, uh, Veritatis, the anonymous work Turbo Philosophorum, and Ludwig Prin's Mysteries of the Worm. Yeah, I'm just going to leave them uh, alone, I think. Oh, a large metal safe. Okay. And we can interact with it. Is it open? It's working fine. I should give it a try. Brilliant. Oh. Bugger. <laughs> I should give it a try. Well, it's a fairly simplistic dial on it. I see. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here, though. I don't know what the combination is. This is to keep exploring, if possible. Oh, we can't go any further that way. What about dead center of the room? I was kind of going around the uh, the walls. Is there something down here? No. It might have... It, maybe the message? Oh, yes. Roman numerals. Right. Okay. So well, it's six, one, four, five. Six, one, four, five. Six, one, four, five. Just wrote that down on my trusty piece of paper with my trusty pen. Okay. 
Um, I don't know if I, I have to turn it left or right first, but we do have the combination, I think. If it is four digits. Go right to start with, I think. So... Six. That's a good sign. One. Four. And all the way around to get to five. Yes! Hey, there you go. <laughs> I was stumped, but not for too long. Wait. This is not a safe, but an entrance to a passage. It is completely dark. The only way to know where it leads is by crawling in. Of course! Well, I'm kind of used to that in this sort of game, so let's go straight in. I have a candle, after all. And there's some spares outside. Okay. What do we got here? Four chairs forming a circle, as if the hideout served as some sort of meeting place. Possibly, yeah. This is the sort of, like, secret society thing, isn't it? This is where they recited that weird Latin phrase that I can't remember right now. Okay, mathematic formula. Written fast and carelessly. Some of the symbols I've never seen before. Mm, more numbers. Some kind of calendar or timetable, maybe. Okay. It's so I can hear a giant machine. Whoa, hang on. Wait, wait, whoa, hang on. Is that a guy? <laughs> He's got a Lego head. Uh, this is a strange machine built out of wood, steel, and glass. I wonder what its function could be. I'm not sure. Let's ask this guy. Whoa. He hasn't got any hands. There is someone sitting here wearing a horrible mask and a yellow robe. He's not moving. He's not there. That explains why he doesn't have any hands. It's only a yellow robe. There is no body inside at all. What can be the meaning of this? Well, maybe he didn't need a body where he was going. Ah. Alright. Where's my cursor gone? Ooh. Oh shit. Whoa! Fuck, no, 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 run, run, run. Hang on. Were you the one that was chanting outside? Damn, I, I can't interact at all. Alright, let's just continue exploring. <laughs> forget it, forget it. What do we got up here? The text is completely smudged. I can't read it, unfortunately. Okay. The machine stopped when I took the mask off. Yeah, the, the creaking of the machine has stopped. Was the mask integral to it? Can I put the mask back? No? What is she saying? What, we, what else we got? Wallpaper's falling off by the looks of it. Alright, let's, let's, let's just go. Let's just go. <laughs> Shut the safe. Lock her in. Okay. Very strange. Very strange. What do we do next? Are we done here? We could be done here. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I say let's go back to East Hill. Well, I haven't actually found any signs of uh, Alexander's whereabouts. It's found a mask and a medal. Not great, really. Is this where the horse and carriage are? Apparently so. Okay, so let's go back to East Hill. So, we can we freely move through all these locations in the game. That's really kind of cool. That's a nice little mechanic that they added. Uh, yeah, through here. And I'm pretty sure up here. That's right. You're still reading the newspaper? Well, I suppose you don't go out much, do you? Okay. Hello, sir. Um, do you know anything about this medal? Hey! Yes. I had one just like this. Got it after the battles of Lang's Neck and Majuba Hill in 1881. A decade ago now. For distinguished conduct in the field, it said. What a farce. So you were in the army, as I thought. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Dr. Wakefield. Sergeant William Conghill, Her Majesty's Sixth Light Infantry. Are you another one of those alienists? Do you doctors not realize that cowardice cannot be cured by your arts? Hmm, why are they keeping you here? The doctors say I suffer from a nervous disorder. I believe this is a term for when they themselves, with all their learning, do not know what to say. But I know the true name of my sickness. It is pure cowardice. I'm looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him. His name is Alexander Dupre. 
Yes, I did know a man by that name. We met briefly. He was here when I arrived. Okay, w what do you know about him? He was a proper lad, educated. He listened closely to the stories of the other inmates, but he kept his own to himself. We talked a lot. He was very close to Miss Co uh, Conhe, Cone too. But I think they got here at the same time. But when he left, he did so alone. I wonder what has become of him since. Who is this Miss Conehe? Or Cone. I don't know how to pronounce that, really. She is a patient here. The lady with the tempestuous character. You may have encountered her already. She has not been the same since Mr. Dupre left, you know. That's the woman over to the left, sitting at the table. Okay. Yep, yeah, she sits to the side, alone and silent. I doubt you could talk to her at all, even if you tried. She sees things. Or at least, she thinks she does. What did you talk about, Mr. Dupre and you? We talked about my time in the south of Africa. I don't like to talk about that, but he somehow made me want to. He was persuasive. He was very interested in one specific story, almost obsessive about it. He wanted to know every little detail. Could you tell me that story? I'm trying to find a patient of mine who has gone missing, and this could be my only hope of finding him. I don't like to relive these memories. A missing patient, you say? I... All right. Maybe my story will be of some use, then. It happened during the Battle of Majuba Hill. I'm sure you've heard of it. In March of 81. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, nope. The attack of the Boer army had taken us by surprise, and our regiment was forced to split up. We quickly found ourselves alone. Just a few men lost on the barren plain. But I don't want to bore you. No, sir. You certainly aren't. Please continue. What's this? A little flashback, maybe? As I said, we were few, and we were sure the enemy was lurking out there. In the cold air of dusk, a thick fog formed quickly, masking everything around us. We could barely see each other. Yeah, cool! Oh, right, I'm actually playing. Cool, okay. Yeah, I can barely see those guys. Where'd he go? Then, the others started to disappear in the fog, which was getting thicker and thicker. Oh, there goes another one. Jeez, oh, they're all gone. It's just me. I could still hear their footsteps for a while, and then nothing. I called their names aloud, even though I knew I shouldn't. Something about the fog terrified me. I felt something in there, not far. A murmur or a beating. Something alive. Waiting. I couldn't help walking towards it. What's this? All of a sudden, my feet felt something in the mud. A body. They were all there, dead. Only Captain Skid was missing. Captain Skid? Oh man, really? I bet he got bullied at school. Did someone open a door they shouldn't have? There's a lot of bodies down here. Hey, who's that? Then the mist cleared out. Oh, and that's it? What had happened? I never knew for certain. I didn't see anything, or if I did, my mind refused to bear such memories. What happened to Captain Skid? When he finally regained consciousness, it was like someone else looked out at us through his eyes. I guess whatever happened affected him, changed him. I know he came back to London. Mr. Dupre asked me of his whereabouts. Maybe he tried to contact him to hear the rest of the story. He was quite preoccupied by it. Hmm. Do you know where I can find this Captain Skid? The last I heard from fellow veterans, he had lost himself to a frenzy of alcohol, opium, and bad company. This downward spiral led him, as many others, to a wretched nadir, a dirty hole, deep in St. Giles' rookery, known as the Crimson Nest. Mayhap you will find him there, alive even, if you're lucky. Okay, so we've got a picture of the regiment there. <laughs> He's the one with the pixel for a face. And we've got another location, St. Giles, right in the centre of London, apparently. Brilliant. Okay, so I guess we can head there. Um, we have a few more items, though. Can we try talking to her again? I mean, <clears throat> it must have been a couple of hours, right? So... Oh, she's very upset. Please do not distress her further. Okay. But yeah, she definitely had a strong reaction. I definitely need to get her to talk to me in some way. 
What about if I show her the cards? Maybe I can get a more sort of intimate talk going if I try and sort of, <clears throat> you know, play psychologist. No? Would you like a piece of metal? No? Would you like, would you like a mask? Yes! Whoa. Fuck it out, straight from my neck. <laughs> it's the isolation ward for you this time, madam. Off we go. The face of the playwright. That's the face of the playwright? Okay. That didn't quite go as I had planned. That's fine. Um, she's off to the isolation ward? Oh, she finally stopped reading. Hi. That poor woman. They must have taken her to the isolation ward. That's by the guy who was drawing, right? Who wanted his paintings back? Let's go have a look. This is getting quite exciting, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Very lax security here, though. They just leave the door open for me to waltz right in. <laughs> in we go. Alright. And the candle's coming into play yet again. Good thing I, I kept it. Oh, shit. What have we got here, then? Room 102A. Oh, right! Oh! So, that means Alexander Dupre must have stayed in one of these rooms. It was 108A, I believe. Oh, we can go in. I don't need some keys or anything. Alright. Uh... Hi there. You might have a weed problem, by the looks of it. Hello. My name's Wakefield. The butterfly's not what it seems. Excuse me, but what butterfly? There is more after the scarab. What? You talking about the cards? Well, hang on, the first one did kind of look like a butterfly, didn't it? Hang on. Yeah. Is one of them a scarab? Maybe it's that third one. Yeah, that could be a scarab. Hang on, let's try and use the cards with, uh, with her. In fact, let's just use everything we've got with her. Now the cards work! Okay! Is this the butterfly you talked about? It displays its wonderful colours. Fills your eyes with awe. This is only a show. Behind the veil, its body crawls on the dirty ground, hides in the darkness and transforms. Another of its lies. So what would this be? Its dark body creaks and rustles with its blind movements. Slowly, step by step, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer. What about this one? It will come. Whatever you do, it will cry out loud, looking at you from everywhere at the same time. What about this one? Him. Him? His mask. My mate from the other room used to scream at night. Always told us he could feel something under his bed. Presence. An eyeless gaze. An eyeless gaze. Wait. Something under his bed? Okay. Okay. Was your mate Alexander Dupre? By any chance, um, do you recognize the guy? No, uh, the mask. Recognize this? No. Want a piece of metal? <laughs> I haven't quite figured what this is for yet. No. Uh, okay. Let's move on. Let's go to, uh, 10, is it 103 or 104? Oh, there's another one. 104A. Okay, so I guess two along should be Alexander's room. <laughs> yeah, again, we can go straight in. Okay. Over here. Oh, there is something over here on the, the drawers. An old pendant on the dresser. It looks valuable. Right. Well, that's another thing successfully stolen. You should be proud of yourself, Mr. Wakefield. You're going to put these guys out of business. Right. Nothing else here, I don't think. Let's move on. Let's head over to 106. I suppose Miss Coney is going to be in one of these rooms and it's going to be locked, I would think. <laughs> it's not this one. Okay. This looks pretty nice, actually, <laughs> considering. Uh, what do we got here? Well, there's a portrait of someone up there. An impressive painting of a lovely maiden, equipped with a fitting, magnificent frame. A little bit out of place in uh, in the isolation ward, though, I think, really. Not the bed. Oh, yeah, this could be the bed, I suppose. This, uh, yeah, he was afraid of a presence under his bed. Can we move the bed? Or Hang on, yes, we can move the bed. Hey, look at this. What the fuck? Is that a hole? It looks like a hole to me. 
and a mirror. Christ, there's still that guy on the other side of the mirror, like wriggling and writhing in pain and horror. Hopefully we can help him out. Anyway, yeah. Through the hole, I suppose? Through the hole it is. All right. So, where are we now? Is this 108? It, oh, hang on, wait, wait. One, is, one of the tiles is loose. Oh, shit. That's a nice little find. <laughs> I wouldn't have inspected that, honestly, but uh, I cannot get it out with my bare hands. It's too heavy. Um, is that what the metal's for? Yes. All right, so you pry it up. Ah, <laughs> finally, it has a use. What do we got? There is something there, half buried in the soil under the tile. What is it? What is that, a bird? Is that an eye? <laughs> so hard to tell when it's so low res. Yeah, it is a long dead bird, I, I can see that much. But what's in its beak? Yeah, what is it? It is an eye! A dirty and horribly deformed glass eye. I have absolutely no use for it, but of course I'm going to take it with me. Nothing else down there. Nope, nothing else in there. Okay. Weird. The window's sealed. Almost no light can reach the room. And the door as well. Just like 26 Paul Street. Very strange. I don't know. I don't know why they do this. Is this writing on the wall? Yep. One of them came last night. I knew what it actually was because of the sign it carried. The sign of the eye. I killed it and hid it well. If more come, they will not find their friend, nor its eye. Right. And the bed itself? Is there another hole behind this bed? No, no one's slept in this place in a long time. Okay, alright. Uh, so I've got an eye. I've got an eye. Um, let's, let's leave, I think. I'm not seeing anything else here unless there's another loose tile. So I'll just scan my cursor over it, just in case. It's a good thing I stepped on it, actually, really. Okay. What about down here? A loose tile, or... It looks wood, actually, over here, so a loose floorboard, maybe? Can't use this, or... Hang on, did I have a look at this? I don't think I did. And it's expen It's an expensive-looking piece of furniture. There's nothing on it. Alright. Out we go. To the next room, I suppose. 108, which is the one we were just in. It's closed with bricks, yes, of course. They're pretending it never existed. They didn't even try to disguise it. She must be in the next room, then. What was this, 110 or something? Oh, right, okay, I thought that was the isolation board. That explains the lack of locks and stuff, but this is the isolation bit. And this is shut and locked. There is no way to open it. Shit, all right. Um, she's still babbling on about the face of a playwright. Um, is there anything else to do here? I don't know. There's no doors in the foreground, so we can't go to like 101, 103, 105 or anything like that. Uh, can I can I talk with this woman in here again? Perhaps she can tell me a little bit more. I found an eye. Uh, no, a presence and eyeless gaze. We went through this. Okay. There's nothing on the table or anything. No. How can she live like this? <laughs> How do they let her live like this? Weird. Very weird. Alright, let's... I suppose let's go back to the horse and carriage, right? There is another location to go to. So that might be our next move. So out we go. He's so obedient waiting there all the time. Alright, next up, St. Giles. Oh shit. It's the place from the dream earlier, isn't it? The slum of St. Giles. The crimson nest shouldn't be far. What about a guy who's hobbling around here? <laughs> Is he gonna be around, I wonder? Let's see. Yeah, just like the dream, I can go this way. Can't use the door. There's about... Ah! Here we go. It wasn't a dream, it was a premonition. Hi there. Right. This man. He looks like the man from my nightmares. He's blind in one eye. The empty socket glistens in the lamplight. 
He seems to want something from me. In my dream, the man had said, Give me back what he took. Right? He took it from you? How did he know I had it? Off he goes, I guess. <laughs> what the fuck? Alright. Okay, uh, well, he's not blocking the way anymore. Oh, what the hell? Oh, it must be in like a tunnel or something. Here we go. There is light at the end of it. We go in? We can go in, apparently. This must be the Crimson Nest. I have heard of such places, where people lose their minds to opium shipped from the Orient. I never thought I'd set foot in one. Until now! Wow. Alright. We, uh, we probably want to make this as quick as possible, really. <laughs> Anyway, this is where I'm going to leave the second part of The Last Door's second season. If you're still enjoying this series, show me some love in the comments and by liking the video, stuff like that. And uh, in part three, we will explore this opium den, hoping to find Captain Skid. See you then. Uh, apparently it reads, I've seen a dead eyelid move. Okay. So I can hear a giant machine- Whoa, hang on. Wait, wait, whoa, hang on. Is that a guy? <laughs> He's got a Lego head. Yeah. <laughs> Very lax security here, though. They just leave the door open for me to waltz right in. <laughs> Is this one awaits? Oh, hang on, wait, wait, wait. 